Hello and welcome to another episode. We have very kindly been lent this really lovely MG4 by our good friend John Chivers. Just to have a go for a week, just to see what we think. James has driven it previously, but I've never actually driven an, an MG4, so this is really nice to give it a go. Please remember to check out our other videos and to click on the subscribe button and tap on the bell icon so you get notifications each time we upload another video. This is an entry level MG4 SE spec which starts at £26,995. It's got a 51 kilowatt hour battery with a range of 218 miles which I think is amazing considering the, the early models of, of EVs which had ranges of 90 miles at 218. I mean, you can pretty much go anywhere, can't you? Um, John chose the entry level model for some specific reasons. One of which is that he just really didn't want a navigation system. The MG4 has got uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, um, which are amazing for navigation and much better generally than built-in navigation systems. My first impressions, it's obviously a completely different drive to anything I've, I've driven recently. You're really, really low down to the road, but it does give you a really nice feeling kind of being in touch with, with the road. The handling is superb and it's really, really nippy. It reminds me a bit of my um, Clio 182 that I had many, many, many moons ago prior to our first EV. It has a really nice low down feel and it's really nice. It is really nice. I'm really, really impressed by it. I've, I have done a video on this previously, uh, but I think that was a bit of a short, sharp version. And that was also the long range trophy top spec. And this one is the base spec. So the cheapest version you can get. I have been looking recently and I've seen these for 24 grand under on Auto Trader with a few miles on them, but you can get them for uh, uh, you know, an appealing price compared to what EV prices were 12 months ago. So there are some good deals out there to be had, but I think the 20... 26,995 is the advertised price. There you go, 26,995. So it, it still sounds expensive, doesn't it? It is expensive, it is, but prices are coming down mm -hmm. uh, and that's good because it means they're more affordable and ultimately more people can have them. So our EV sales in our business actually have been really good. They've gone right up um, since Tesla knocked nine grand off the price of their cars. So uh, we're, we're quite pleased with that. So good news for anybody looking to buy a second hand EV mm -hmm. or to get into the EV market. Anyway, let's just crack on with some technicalities. So a really big selling point for this EV is it's running LFP batteries. So lithium polymer, so zero cobalt. And cobalt's always a talking point for electric cars. So this electric car will use less cobalt than an internal combustion car because cobalt is used in the desulfurization of fossil fuels. Many people don't know that, but that's a fact. This has got zero cobalt. So, can I just say that is just the base model, though, isn't it? It is just the base model, and that has that, yeah, and that's one of the reasons John said he went for this this particular model. It is exactly is that for that, and yeah. also the fact it doesn't have a sat nav because he doesn't like an, an inbuilt sat nav. He prefers to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. As we are, uh, we're using Apple CarPlay, and it's it's fantastic. It's got a nice big screen inside, uh, and it seems to work quite fluidly. Although I will say, use a genuine cable. Genuine cables seem to work very well. Uh, Non-genuine cables seem to be a bit hit and miss. So worth considering that. So uh, do you want to talk about some of the negatives? Or do you want to start on the positives? Let's start on the positives. Okay, first of all, would you have one? Yes, I would. Okay. It, it is a really nice car. For us, it practically wouldn't work just in terms of space. We have a Florence who, although is small, yeah. has a lot of stuff. And for things yeah. like when we go on holiday, we absolutely fill the car, the running buggy, that kind of thing. It, it wouldn't work for us. I, I previously have, have um, talked about how it compares to my 182 and it has yeah. a similar feel to it yeah. in the way it drives uh, and the way you feel you're close to the road that kind of go-kart feeling yeah the wheels are pushed right out into the corners so the handling is very good um, 
Uh, another thing that I'm very impressed with is it has an ultra thin battery, so the floor is very low. The rear bench is also very low, but just like a standard internal combustion car, you don't have that higher uh, bench height that you, you get where your legs don't uh, aren't supported by the rear seat and your head hits the roof. That's not a problem in this car, it's really spacious. So, but as Kate said, the boot is a little bit on the small side. <coughs> I think this is going to be one of the electric cars which will appear to the younger generation because of the way it looks it's got that kind of I'm not going to say boy racer but it's got that kind of look which is yeah. it, it's, it's going to appeal to that kind of person yes yeah no I agree with that and there is a 420 30 40 brake horsepower version of this four-wheel drive on the way I think that's going to be the one that people really go for when they want the zippy boy racery kind of thing and i dare say many grown-ups will have it as well do you know what though this has got that zippy feeling to it yeah so rear wheel drive and that's nice because you don't get that torque steer feel that you get with a lot of evs when you put your foot down and it starts pulling left and right so all the drive from the back and then of course steering at the front and uh, that makes a nice combination yeah the handling and the the, the instant kind of speed is really nice the first the very first time i got in it because i haven't driven one of these before the first time i got in it that was the first thing i noticed it was it was nippy and it handled really 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 well and, and that's one of the, the the big things about this is it does feel completely conventional to me it does it doesn't feel like you're driving an ev you don't feel any weight in it mm. and we were on the motorway yesterday and we did about 115 miles uh, and it returned 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour and that was at motorway speeds in both directions everything on as normal uh, and we pulled into a charger at 25 percent and we left with about 80. so the range is is what i consider easily enough even with the smaller lfp battery in this car it's it's range advertised range is 218 miles on the base model but realistically would you say probably 180 probably yeah, yeah. i would say so but yeah. i mean if you look back at the you know the first evs that were on the market like our nissan leaf which did 90 218 or yeah. 180 is just incredible now yeah. and i think the other positive this is like we said the base model <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is the base model, but it still comes with loads of really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't it? It does. It, in fact, I don't think it really misses much, does it? It doesn't. It doesn't have the full strip across the back. Mm. Um, it doesn't have one-touch windows all round, but it does have four electric windows with one-touch drivers. What else does it doesn't it have heated seats. No heated seats, which makes me a bit sad. Yeah. But and it doesn't have a a, a camera. To help you with your reversing that is one thing that i really missed when i reversed it i did notice that john I wasn't did. bothered but... it made me realize how bad i am i was <laughs> yeah. having to reverse it onto the driveway and i was like oh my yeah. goodness i'm to use mirrors which is silly isn't it really but yeah. for me i i miss that yeah no i've 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 definitely become accustomed to having really a, a, a reversing camera you've still got so. the beepers you have yeah, so you're not going to crash so you don't get the um the full brake light and tail light strip which I quite like I think that's quite a nice touch um, and when I saw the car first time I actually installed a dash cam for John up here uh, when I was installing that I thought there's something wrong with it and he said no no you don't get it on the base model so one of those to consider um, not a show stopper by any by any means but um, yeah it's just a, a nice touch mm. it looks really nice I think the the exterior look of it is is nice especially from the front the back slightly more um marmite yeah i'd say slightly more yeah. marmite but from the front definitely it's got a really kind of mean look to it mm. yeah I, I think the back is my least favorite but it's obviously been built for aerodynamicy um the curve in the rear lights is there for a reason um, and that's to aid efficiency. At the moment, our last 41 miles have been 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, which is which is enough. That's around town, uh, and I, I suspect that will drop a little bit if you if you were to go on the motorway. Another positive is the headlights. They're full LED, 
and they are excellent. Um, really noticeable for somebody like me who's running projectors which are designed for halogens and I've put LEDs in them. I really notice the difference with this. There's a real solid beam of light that uh, that goes across the uh, your vision, and, and uh, yes, yeah, the, they they are a, a massive, massive upgrade in my opinion. So something that uh, for me as well, as you get older, your eyesight's not as good, and at night you need that light. Um, and I've had no problems at night with this. So. No. The other thing I like is the interior. They've given it a more minimalistic feel. Um, yeah. than the one that they gave to the MG ZS and the um, MG5. Yeah. So where your gear selector is on the MG5, and I think the ZS, you've got several of the buttons, one which is like your curves, you've got your mode button, mm. all of that. And they haven't got that in this and it, it's really nice. It does have a, a kind of stripped down feel. Mm. Um, actually just mentioning the curves button, one real positive on the MG4, is that all the other models of MGs that I've driven, you have to, every time you get in the car, set the yes, curse to level three. On this, you don't. So you get in, it's on level three already. Yes. You can just drive and not think about it. And on level three, the regen's good. Yeah, it is really good. Yeah, that's that's a real positive, because when you get in, it, that you just look and there's barely anything there. You've got a wireless charging panel, which you don't get in this standard range model, but you do in the uh, trophy. Um, on the top and then your gear selector and you really you don't need to touch anything do you it's just mm. get in and drive and also with that you don't need to switch on or off it just switches on automatically when you put your foot on the brake um, and it switches off when you lock it which we've come a cropper with that haven't we because we've walked off and left it open and the car stayed powered up so you have to remember to lock it because the car stays powered up until you lock it which is a bit of a weird one i thought it might be able to sent you from mm. getting out and uh but it's 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 not a massive showstopper for me I'm, I'm i'm not it's just one of them things that i would prefer it to be it'd be better if yes. it wasn't yeah. like that the seats just quickly I, feel, I think they're comfy. Yeah, they're really comfortable. I've seen a few reviews of people saying that they don't feel comfortable and you can feel like the bits and bobs underneath, but I, I can't. I mean, we were in the car for hours yesterday mm -hmm. and at no point did I feel uncomfortable. Right. And they've got a really nice sort of stitching detail around them as well, which just yeah. adds a nice little extra something. No, I'm with you on that. I think the fabric seats, I prefer fabric to leather, mm. but they're very comfortable. No problem with yesterday at all. And I've sat in the back as a passenger as well, and that was that was the case there too. Yeah. So, yeah. So, negatives. Yeah, okay. So, do you I want have, to start? I have one big one. Go on. <laughs> For me, it's the... Is it called the lane assist? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. What's it called? Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. I think it's a lane keep assist, or what we know as like lane keep assist. Um, it reverts to on every time, and as soon as you get on a road that's got white lines, it starts pulling and yanking, and you have to keep turning it off, and that's a that's a real pain for me. I, I don't like it. Um, I like to be able to just turn it on when I want it and turn it off when I don't. I've never so. liked it on any car though. Any car that's had it, it's not just this. No. I just no. don't like that feeling of the steering wheel pulling in your hands. It's really disconcerting. I yes. don't like it. Yeah, no, I agree. That's that's a, a big one for me. Mm. I've seen some reviews where people talk about the interior being a bit plasticky. And I can see, I can see why people are saying that. But you have to remember that this is, is priced as being an affordable car. Yeah. So you, you wouldn't expect anything different. And no. personally, I don't think it looks that bad. No, no, I, I agree. There is hard plastics, but there's hard plastics in all cars. Mm. You know, don't be fooled. It's, I think people actually comment on that because they want to somehow try and devalue it. But I don't get in and think anything about hard plastics no. at all. I think the building here, nothing rattles. In fact, the only thing that rattles is John's glasses <laughs> in the glasses holder. So, and we've got a Tesla Model Y and it has got glasses holders. So, you know, puts things into perspective, doesn't it? It certainly does. Oh, the only other thing people have mentioned, they've said that the infotainment system's a bit glitchy. Yeah. Um, I haven't played with it enough to notice that personally. Yeah. When I've been using it, I've used it with mainly with my Apple yeah cable and it's worked fine yeah um the stereo mm. i don't think is quite up to the standard i like i like tunes i like dance music from the 80s and 90s and um yeah i feel like i would like a little bit more bass there but 
again, that's just a personal thing. I could live with the stereo in this and I live with the stereo in an MG5. So the way it feels on the road is, I think, pretty much perfect. The suspension setup is really, really very good. It's got a nice fine balance between comfortable and actually you feel like your wheels aren't bouncing off the road. You feel like you've got a good contact area at all times. Uh, and that sort of gives you a bit of confidence in the drive. And for the fact that the wheels are pushed right into the corners, it's, it's noticeable. Mm. If you jumped out of an MG ZS EV, for example, or a Nissan Leaf and got into this, you would definitely, definitely feel it. It's, it's definitely uh, a, better, a better feel all round. It's so smooth that you sometimes don't realise how fast you're going. That's true, actually. We've got a, a 60 mile an hour road that we, we that leads to our house, and when you're driving down it at 60, you do not feel like you're doing 60. No. In the Tesla, you do. Yeah. You do. You are very aware of the speed, and I think that's a pretty, pretty good indication of, of how well the car's set up. Mm -hmm. And that's MG, isn't it? MG have always been good at setting up suspension, so hopefully that'll be something that carries on in the future. Would you have one? Um. I'd have the 400 plus brake horsepower one, yeah. Well, I would. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. I don't know why, because I don't need it, but yeah, I would. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I found that the acceleration in this is good to a point, but then I don't know why, I just like that a little bit more. Maybe it's because I've ridden motorbikes and I feel like I want a little bit more, but it's easily powerful enough for 99% of the population. So not you. Just boys. It's, you. Bo it's a boy thing. It really is. You're that 1%. It is. Yeah. It, th there's no need to get the 400 brake horsepower one. But I would have the 400 brake horsepower one, yes. Today's the day that I'm taking the car back to John. Um, and it's been a really nice week. I've been, I've been pleasantly surprised. This, as we've mentioned before, but it's just such an easy car to drive. I can't put my finger on exactly why and I think it's a combination of the suspension being set just perfectly not too hard not too soft being so close to the road it's really nice it's quite a difference obviously to the to the model Y and you're in such a high up position it's so easy to handle and it's got a really really nice nippy little feeling to it so yeah overall it's been a really nice week um, Florence really likes it James really likes it we all really like it but it is now time to return it. So a massive thank you to John Chivers, who very, very kindly lent us, lent us this MG4. And you should check out his YouTube channel. If you just search John Chivers, it's a nice mix of electric motorbikes, mainly, um, some stuff on the MG4, and I think the MG ZS EV. There's also a little bit of music on there, I think. So yeah, check out John Chivers on YouTube. Right. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on Twitter at Kate Phantom. And we'll see you again soon with another episode.